Oh, oh boy, had to turn the air conditioner on there just so that we could uh, make a video here because I was not expecting to make a video after the Apple event yesterday. Uh, I was poised to, had all my notes ready while I was watching the Apple event, and slowly but surely as the event progressed, nothing really triggered me to think I should probably make a video about the Apple event, especially as it relates to Final Cut Pro. And then all of a sudden, some things started trickling in. Now, before you get excited, don't start thinking that this is a big, huge, revolutionary update to Final Cut Pro or a bunch of stuff related to video editing, although there is a lot of stuff that relates to video editing from the Apple event about the iPhone. Someone messaged me yesterday saying that they were seeing a version of Final Cut Pro 11.2 at the Apple event in order to demo the ProRes RAW capabilities of the new iPhone 17 Pro. So that was interesting. Is Apple going to jump to 11.2 with just a ProRes RAW for iPhone update, or will there be more in that update? Starting to get a little intrigued, especially knowing that that update would most likely come, I would say, maybe after the October event, which is going to feature iPads, and new Macs, possibly a new Mac Pro. We'll see. I've got some notes here, so if you see me looking down, that's why I I have to gather my thoughts because I'm so excited that I just want to have this big stream of consciousness. Um, and then Apple had a press release for Final Cut Camera 2.0, which was mentioned in the keynote about Final Cut Camera being able to handle ProRes RAW on the iPhone 17 Pro. All right, so combing the details of the Final Cut Pro Camera 2.0 press release. There is mention of Final Cut Pro 11.2 and Final Cut for iPad version 2.3. Okay, interesting. And then just some details on what the iPhone 17 Pro can do. So we have ProRes RAW on the iPhone, but it has to record to external storage for ProRes RAW. It can shoot open gate in resolutions greater than 4K DCI. The front camera, uh, the front camera's sensor is a full square sensor, which has been a big ask for a lot of people that are tired of it being a more vertical oriented sensor and the limitations that that imposes. We also get mention of Genlock and timecode, which is Important for editors, especially if their source footage is coming in from iPhones, without timecode, it can be tricky to sync it up. A lot of times, if you don't have someone on set who's doing that, like a DIT or a loader, digital loader, um, that stuff comes to you and you have to take care of it, which can be problematic, especially if you're editing in Final Cut Pro, which can't batch timecode sync, by the way. I have to use the Tentacle Sync Studio app to do that. That would be an amazing update in Final Cut Pro 11.2 that you can batch sync clips with timecode. Maybe that'll be in 11.2. And then lastly, snuck in there a little bit of Apple Log too. So the next iteration of Apple Log for the iPhone 17 Pro. Now, I am still using the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I haven't had a compelling reason to update to the newest iPhones, uh, obviously for a long time. And without spending a ton of time on it, I am just the type of user who falls between the, the, the cracks or falls into the cracks here when it comes to the iPhone 17 Pro. Certainly there are features in the new iPhone that I could take advantage of, and I'm gonna talk about just a couple of them here. But, because I'm not shooting professionally or doing all of my content creation with the iPhone, I'm doing very little of it using my actual iPhone, a lot of these features are not terribly exciting to me. And then on the other side, on the post-production side, I'm not doing client work, uh, whether it's video editing, uh, post-production supervision, all the stuff that I used to do before I had this YouTube channel. I'm not doing a lot of that anymore. So I'm not seeing a lot of that footage. I'm not seeing those workflows that would then compel me, well, I better get an iPhone 17 Pro if I want to stay on the bleeding edge of everything that's going on as more and more productions and content creators start using the iPhone 17 Pro in their workflows. So it's just not a need for me to go into debt around $1,000, probably a little bit more to get the new iPhone when this one is not experiencing any lag 
The photos on it are fine. They're good enough for me to post to Instagram stories or take photos of my kids and post to a shared album that I have for them. All of that kind of stuff. Um, so I do like Final Cut Camera, and I have used it for some of the footage that I've recorded for this channel, especially for some of the short and vertical content where I want to have more control over some of the camera settings. But for the most part, I still use the native camera app. Anyway... I'm not updating uh, my iPhone. I'm going to stick with the 13, even though I just watched Tyler Stallman's video, which was also very interesting, and I highly recommend. I'll link it in, down in the description. He gives the perspective of a photographer on the new iPhone 17 Pro, but there's a lot of stuff for those of you who like to create video content and do post-production on video stuff um, to chew on in Tyler's video, so I definitely recommend that. Um, so with Final Cut Pro 11.2, the press release talks about how with the ProRes RAW footage from the iPhone, you're going to be able to adjust exposure, color temperature, tint, and demosaicing. Those were the main examples that they gave. And the other interesting thing that compelled me to make a video was that Apple worked with Blackmagic Design to make ProRes RAW finally available in DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve Studio, and it will be in a free software update to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So now you can record ProRes RAW with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And that got me wondering, one big thing that's been missing from Final Cut Pro is support for B-RAW. Does Apple's continued collaboration with Blackmagic Design, is that going to lead to B-RAW support in Final Cut Pro? I wouldn't be surprised if Final Cut Pro version 11.2 finally reciprocates the partnership that Apple has with Blackmagic Design with ProRes RAW, if that's going to reciprocate to B-RAW being compatible with Final Cut Pro finally. Now, I don't shoot B-RAW. I have I've have, um, been on a few shoots where we have shot in B-RAW, and it's a whole thing. You got to make proxy clips, edit off of those, and then luckily my colorist, Cody Jones, he um, is in DaVinci Resolve, so we can relink from the proxy files to the B-RAW files. But it would be really nice with all of the power of Apple Silicon to be able to edit B-RAW natively on a Mac with M1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever it's going to be um, in Final Cut Pro for those of us who love Final Cut Pro, the editing side, and then work with that footage in DaVinci Resolve in a color, uh, in a color turnover workflow if you so desire. So hopefully we'll see that continued integration because Blackmagic also released this new piece of hardware that allows for Genlock while shooting with the iPhone 17 Pro. And that's a big deal as more and more content is created and movies are created using the iPhone. Now, maybe not a cam or B cam is an iPhone, but maybe some of the action cameras, things that are mounted to vehicles, stuff that's inside a building that's going to blow up, whatever it is. This uh, ability to use the iPhone 17 Pro with Genlock and timecode is a big deal. So just to recap some of these updates that I'm hoping to see in Final Cut Pro 11.2, in addition to the ProRes RAW support for the iPhone 17, I'd love to see batch timecode syncing in Final Cut Pro 11.2, as well as um, support for B-RAW natively in Final Cut Pro. Those would be two big updates to Final Cut Pro that would both satisfy video editors that are in higher-end post-production workflows and satisfy people who love the Blackmagic camera lineup and love Final Cut Pro, but hate that they can't work with their B-RAW footage natively, especially in Apple Silicon, which can just chew through anything, it seems. So just to recap then, am I buying anything besides the iPhone 17 Pro? We saw the um, AirPods Pro 3. I thought that was actually the most compelling thing uh, of the entire event as it relates to what I might buy. Uh, and then ultimately, I am not feeling compelled to leave my original AirPods Pro and move towards the AirPods Pro 3. I also have the AirPods Max, the original version with the lightning connection for recharging. 
And I don't use those a ton, but uh, I have them. And so I'm just going to stick with the two sets of AirPods that I have, especially because my AirPods battery life is really good. It's mostly just listening to things when my family is around um, doing other stuff. I'm washing the dishes, listening to a podcast, whatever the case may be. Although Tyler, in his video, he talked about some of these really cool features that the AirPods were going to have in conjunction with the iPhone, like um, being able to record in a higher quality, studio quality microphone using the built-in microphones in the AirPods, being beamed directly to the iPhones for that higher quality audio. I think uh, triggering record from the AirPods, but some of those features that were announced at WWDC haven't come out yet. So maybe we'll see something with that with the AirPods Pro 3. Last thing I'm going to say with the iPhone 17 Pro, and I won't spend a ton of time on this. I don't love the photos from the iPhone. Um, even though the iPhone has improved through the 14, 15, 16, and now 17, even the photos that they demoed in the event, I don't think they look good. Is the color nice? Yes. Uh, obviously it's a small sensor, so you're not going to get as much shallow depth of field in the photos that you take. Even if you use portrait mode, which I have used, I just used it to take some photos of an item I was selling on Facebook marketplace. And, and there are times where I am happy with the iPhone photo, uh, you know, when I take a picture of my kids and then do some editing and effects or some film emulation on it. But all the photos that they showed me, there's just way too sharp. Apple is doing too much to these photos. They are making them just too sort of rigid and ultra sharp. You can see every little pore, every little detail of every line. There needs to be an ability to control the sharpness, whether it's turning it off or adjusting its intensity. Most of the cameras, the camera I'm shooting on right now in the menus, you can dial in the sharpness to whatever your preference is. This is something I think that Apple software needs to allow for, even if it's just in Final Cut Camera. We need to be able to control the sharpness. I don't want to have to think about adding a filter accessory on top of the camera or adding some kind of desharpening or slight blurring effect to the footage in, uh, in whatever photo editing software I'm using or in the video editing software I'm using if I'm incorporating photos th there. Tyler Stallman, he even mentioned the sharpness is too much in his iPhone uh, event recap. And it really turns me off from wanting to upgrade to the iPhone 17 because there isn't any control over that. Now, I gravitate towards these older cameras, these Canon Digicams, even the newer Canon Digicams. This one's pretty old. Lower megapixels, CCD sensors, um, lower resolution. There's, there's a dreaminess to these photos, just like with the film photos that I take. And I've shot in medium format. I have photography books where the photos were shot in 8x10. And while they are incredibly crisp and high resolution, there's still an element of sort of this like micro softness that blends together to create an image that feels more natural to the eye and more natural to what we see as people. With uh, the iPhone, it sharpens things way too much. And the photos as um, I watch them in the event really turn me off to wanting to upgrade my iPhone in order to take better photos. So Apple, if you listen to this, Please give us control over some of the things that you're doing with the software to sharpen things, do noise reduction, all of these things that are nice, but people who are hobbyist photographers that have professional level skills or professional photographers can have a bit more control over this. I honestly felt like when they demoed the photos that some of the professional ph photographers had taken with the iPhone 17, I honestly was wondering, did they do something in their photo editing apps to just reduce that sharpness? Did they unsharpen their photos a little bit? Because they did look a touch dreamier than the photos that Apple provided. Now, I could go into all of this about these cameras, my desire to use camcorders, all of that, but I'm going to save that for a video on this channel that's separate from this. I don't want to spend too much time on it. So just to review 
the big thing here as it relates to us as video editors, a lot of new post-production workflows that um, you're going to have to be aware of as it relates to footage from the iPhone 17 Pro, especially ProRes RAW, GenLock timecode, Apple Log 2, and there's going to be some updates and things that you're going to need to do to integrate that stuff into your workflow and become aware of if you're receiving footage from production that was shot on the iPhone 17 Pro. Um, we'll most likely see an update to the XML. There will probably be a library update that's required for older libraries in Final Cut Pro when we do get that 11.2 update. And there may be new system requirements, 11.2 and Final Cut Pro for iPad 2.3 and Final Cut Camera do phase out some of the um, do phase out some of the older phones, iPads, and I'm sure Macs that are going to be capable of using that software. Now, there might be some features in that software that older phones can't use. Um, so you can still use Final Cut Camera 2.0, but you might be missing out on some of the features if you have an older phone like an iPhone 13 Pro like I do. So get ready for some Final Cut updates. Uh, they are coming. It is confirmed from Apple. We don't have to wonder what's coming anymore. Um, but the big thing left to wonder is how extensive will those updates be? Will B-RAW be supported in Final Cut Pro 11.2? Will you be able to batch sync audio to video using timecode rather than one clip at a time? Let's find out together. Uh, I'll be watching closely as October draws near. And if any other coverage from some of my favorite tech YouTubers um, illuminates anything else, I'll definitely post into um, YouTube on my channel. Uh, and if it's big enough, I'll make a video about it. So thanks everyone for watching until the next video all about Final Cut Pro. I'll see you soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.